In the previous video, we have seen that various cell adhesion molecules play important role in adhering cells to each other as well as to the basal lamina. These adhesion molecules form various types of cell junctions which impart them specific functions. So today we shall learn about intercellular junctions. Before we start, this is Pratima from Planet Physiology. If you are new to my channel, do consider it to subscribe and press bell icon to keep in touch with the latest uploads. Okay, intercellular connections are also known as intercellular junctions. They are broadly divided into three groups. First is the occluding junctions like tight junctions. They occlude the intercellular space. Next is the adhesive junctions. These junctions attach cells to one another and also to the surrounding tissues. These junctions provide strength and stability to the tissues and involve various cell adhesion molecules. Adhesive junctions include desmosomes, sonula adherence, hemidesmosomes and focal adhesions. The third type of intercellular connection is communicating junction like gap junctions. They allow transfer of ions, molecules and impulses through them and thus permit cells to communicate with each other rapidly. Let us begin with the occluding junctions that is tight junctions. Tight junctions are also called as zonula occludens. These are mainly found towards the apical margins of the epithelial cells as well as endothelial linings. For example, in intestinal mucosa, renal tubular cells, choroid plexus, etc. These pictures show tight junctions in the renal tubules and the choroid plexus. Here, the integral membrane proteins like occludins, claudins and junctional adhesion molecules that is jams participate in formation of tight junctions. This diagram represents formation of tight junctions by various membrane proteins. So, these are occludins, then these are the claudins and the jams. As indicated in the second diagram, each of these proteins form network of strands and such strands of neighboring cells are attached to each other with their extracellular domains and thus obliterate the intercellular space. Intracellular domains of these proteins attach to the actin filaments through the peripheral proteins. Thus, tight junctions join cytoskeletons of two adjacent cells and occlude the intercellular space also. Now, what are the functions of tight junctions? Presence of tight junctions allow cellular sheets to act like a barrier. They prevent passage of ions and solutes through paracellular route that is through the intercellular spaces. As a result, the substance must be transported through the epithelial cells to cross the epithelial barrier. Efficiency of tight junctions depend on the type and the number of integral proteins participating in its formation. For example, Epithelial lining of distal convoluted tubules of kidney or the cells forming blood-brain barrier possess very tight junctions and do not allow paracellular movement at all. This helps in formation of barriers like blood-brain barrier or blood aqueous barrier. In contrast, tight junctions of proximal convoluted tubules are very leaky and allow paracellular transport also. Integrity of tight junctions is also calcium dependent and hence transient increase in the permeability of tight junctions can be seen under certain circumstances. Another important function of tight junction is to maintain apico-basal polarity of the cells. Tight junctions are usually present towards the apical margin of the cell and prevent movement of integral proteins like transport proteins from apical to basolateral surface. Thus, they maintain differential distribution of these proteins and allow cell to perform their specialized functions at different surfaces. Let us understand this with the help of simple example. For glucose absorption, 
apical surface of proximal convoluted tubule as well as enterocytes have sglt transporters which are sodium glucose co-transporters while basolateral surface possesses glut transporters that is glucose transporters thus glucose is absorbed by active transport from the apical surface and by diffusion from the basolateral surface of the cells thus tight junctions maintain these transporters at the respective surfaces so that these cells can absorb glucose properly now coming to the adhesive junctions they include intercellular junctions as well as cell to extracellular matrix junctions they are subdivided according to the extent and the location of the contact let us start with the zonular adherence zonular adherence is also called as intermediate junction it is located just basal to the tight junctions they are mainly formed by cadherins the cell adhesion molecules extracellular domains of cadherin form calcium dependent homodimers with the adjacent cells while cytoplasmic domains of cadherin attach to the actin through catenins in this region there is intercellular space of about 20 nanometers zona adherence reinforces the intercellular attachments of tight junctions and prevent them from mechanical disruption next junction is fascia adherence it is also an intercellular adhesive junction but it is found in non epithelial cells like intercalated disc of cardiac muscles smooth muscles and between the glial cells and the neurons they resist cell damage due to shear or pressure desmosomes or macula adherence is a specialized structure for cell to cell adhesion and these are randomly arranged on the lateral sides of the cell membrane these are very strong adhesion molecules and are abundant in tissues which are subjected to intense mechanical stress like cardiac muscles urinary bladder gi tract and epithelial cells they are present basal to zonula adherence this diagram shows tight junctions near the apical margin then the zonula adherence basal to it and next are the desmosomes desmosomes are formed again by cadherins and cadherin family anchoring proteins anchoring proteins are aggregated on the inner aspects of the cell membrane to form a thickened area inside the cell which in turn is attached to the intermediate filaments extracellular regions of desmosome show calcium dependent heterophilic attachments with the neighboring cells intercellular space in this region is also filled with electron dense filamentous material desmosomes form very strong adhesions and provide tensile strength to the tissue and hence they are found in the tissues with high wear and tear rate like skin cervix gums cardiac muscles etc now let us study the clinical aspects associated with desmosomal proteins mutations in these proteins are associated with arrhythmogenic cardiomyopathy where person has high incidence of severe ventricular tachyarrhythmias and sudden cardiac death especially in younger persons and athletes in this case ventricular muscles are degenerated and are replaced by fibro fatty tissue autoimmune antibodies or bacterial toxins against desmosomal proteins or also the mutations in this desmosomal proteins are also associated with various skin and mucous membrane diseases like blistering diseases or keratoderma now coming to the cell to extracellular matrix adhesions first is hemidesmosome they are present on the basal surface of epithelial cells and attach cells to the basal lamina they appear very similar to the half of the desmosome and hence are called as hemidesmosomes but these are formed by integrins and not by cadherins 
साइटोप्लाज्मिक डोमेन्स ऑफ हेमिडेसमोजोम्स आल्सो अटैच टू द इंटरमीडिएट फिलामेंट्स अपार्ट फ्रॉम फॉर्मेशन ऑफ सेल टू मैट्रिक्स जंक्शंस हेमिडेसमोजोम्स आर आल्सो इन्वॉल्व इन सिग्नलिंग पाथवेज सच एज कीरेटिनोसाइट माइग्रेशन और कैंसर मेटास्टासिस द लास्ट एडिसिव जंक्शन इज फोकल एडिजन these are local attachments between cell and extracellular matrix they also involve integrins which are attached to the actin filaments within the cell and collagen and other filamentous structures in the extracellular matrix focal adhesions are dynamic structures and show frequent formation and disruption hence they are mainly associated with migratory cells and help in their movement or motility for example margination and chemotaxis of wbcs in response to tissue damage focal adhesions also play important role in initiating signaling cascades in the cell according to the conditions of the extracellular matrix now coming to the last type of cell junctions which are communicating junctions the gap junctions or nexus these junctions directly connect cytoplasm of neighboring cells and allow direct passage of ions molecules and other organic substances as well as impulses through them as you can note over here these are the gap junctions allowing movement of substances between the neighboring cells each gap junction is made up of transmembrane protein called as connexon so here is a connexon of one cell and the connexon of another cell as you can note each connexon is made up of six subunits called as connexins connexins may or may not be identical in their protein composition when connexons of two cells align properly it forms a gap junction with a lumen diameter of about 2 nanometers permeability and selectivity of gap junctions is determined by type of connexin subunit also the open and closed state of gap junctions is regulated by intracellular ph as well as calcium level this part of the picture represents open state and the closed state of the gap junction okay what are the functions of gap junctions first they serve as electrical synapses which help sensitive tissues like cardiac and smooth muscles in rapid propagation of impulse gap junctions also permit direct passage of organic solutes from one cell to another cell for example sugars or amino acids with molecular weight up to 1000 they also help in exchange of hormones as well as chemical messengers abnormalities in connexin proteins are also associated with variety of diseases for example in case of charcot mani tooth syndrome connexin 32 is defective this condition is characterized by progressive loss of muscle tissue and touch sensation across the various parts of the body different types of abnormalities of connexin 40 are associated with idiopathic atrial fibrillation tetralogy of fallot and other congenital heart diseases so here we finish with the details of intercellular connections before winding up let us quickly summarize the important points of the cell junctions tight junction is the occluding junction made up of occludins claudins and jams they are located at the apical margins of the cellular sheets and act as barrier for paracellular movement of substance they also maintain apico basal polarity of the cells next is the adhering junctions first is zona adherens it is located just below the tight junctions and strengthen them it is made up of cadherins which attach to the actin filaments in the cell another adhering junction is desmosome located basal to the zona adherens they are also made up of cadherins but attach to the intermediate filaments in the cell these are strong adhesions and provide tensile strength to the tissues hemidesmosome is the cell to matrix junction made up of integrins which in turn are attached again to the intermediate filaments they play important role in intracellular signaling 
as well as cancer metastasis focal adhesions are also cell to matrix junction made up of integrins but they are attached to the actin filaments and are dynamic structures associated with cell movements last is the communicating junction the gap junction it is made up of connexon and allow direct transfer of solutes chemicals as well as impulses from one cell to another so that's all for this session thank you if you enjoy my presentations press the like button and share it with your friends for more such videos subscribe my channel and click the bell icon thank you for watching and see you in the next video